Hi, I'm Mary May. I'm going to be showing you how to carve traditional Springerly cookie molds. Hi, I'm Mary May. I have a wood carving studio in Charleston, South Carolina, and I've been carving nearly 30 years. Now, I've also had opportunities to teach around the world, even at Dictum in Munich. And so that was a real honor to be asked to go over there and teach. And so what I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to be showing you how to carve traditional Springerly cookie molds. Now, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. I know a little bit of German, but... <laughs> you know, I always mess up the pronunciation. Anyway, these are very traditional cookie molds. Now, I am not a baker. I'm a wood carver, so I understand how to actually make the molds. I've actually made these um, cookies several times, some successfully, some not so successfully, but I understand what is needed. <laughs> so let me just show you something, because I go all over. Uh, I go to antique stores. I even pick up some when I was over in Germany. But I pick up these samples of cookie molds already made. And some of them are machined, some of them are hand carved, and some of them have a combination of different ones. Now these are actually ones that where you, when you press the cookie dough into this and then you reverse it, you take you want the reverse image of this. This actually sets into it, so the edge of the cookie mold is the outline of the design. Okay, so these deep ones, that's how that works. And most of the ones that I have are like that. Uh, this is not quite as deep, but isn't that beautiful? Just the, the all the textures and everything. Um, what it does is just the pattern itself ends up really uh, creating the beauty. And just the repetitive patterns and so just showing you some of the examples of what I've got here, what I've picked up along the way. And these are very traditional sort of gingerbread type figurines. And of course there's the, the uh, traditional windmill. And um, I believe the Dutch also have uh, a type of cookie mold that they um, make also. Similar recipe, sort of a spicy recipe, um, but uh, so if you see, the, this is uh, very much a machine that's probably routed out and then hand, the, the details are hand carved. Uh, this is one that I actually carved. This wood is cherry and you can see uh, again a lot of, a lot of very um, repetitive patterns to show a lot of the details on that. And so those are the ones that are set inside. Then there's the kind that you actually take and you've, you've got the molds and then you roll across the dough. And then so you have this pattern or where you have like a border of where the cookies are, where they will be cut. And so that's the kind that I'm going to be showing you. Here's another example of some Christmas designs where you have a border, you press the cookie dough into it, turn it over, and then you cut them out into individual cookies. So this is really simply just a surface pattern that's pressed in. And so what I've got here is uh, I've just got a piece of basswood. Now I recommend using basswood just for practicing and kind of getting the techniques down. Uh, typically these are either used with uh, apple or pear or some very solid or cherry, something very solid so that you can really get some good details. Basswood is a good beginning wood, uh, wood carving wood to start with just because it's very soft. Not necessarily something that would hold up long term for making a lot of cookies. But for practice it's really good and for this demonstration I'm going to show you just because it's a little quicker to get through it. So I've got a piece of basswood here. Now one other thing I wanted to cover before um, I sort of get dive into it is when you're making the actual cookies uh, you do want to have some sort of finish on it, but you want to have to, you want to make sure that the finish that you put on it is edible. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're wanting to do something, maybe the kind of oil that would be on a cutting board, or maybe the, the handles of knives, something like that. Just a very neutral oil that's not toxic. <laughs> okay, so you need to make sure of that. And then when you actually make 
the cookies themselves, you sprinkle a little bit of powdered sugar or a little bit of flour into the mold itself and it helps to release it. Okay, so that's just, that's the, the that's what I learned, a little bit of baking that I did, <laughs> just helps it. Otherwise you get dough stuck into your cookie dough or the mold and it just gets to be a mess to clean out. Uh, so just wanted to point that out first. Now, what I have, I've got this just children's play, uh, play dough uh, or clay. And I want to show you, as I work through something, I test it every once in a while, because the thing about the, the cookie molds is everything that you carve is in reverse. So everything that is, let's just say, for example, a face, okay? So you carve the nose, which you want to, in the real cookie, you want the nose to be further out, right? So in the cookie mold, you actually have to carve the nose the deepest part. Okay, so everything is, is in reverse. So it really can mess with your head. And if you ever get lost and confused of, oh no, is that supposed to be further or closer? Take some clay, press it in, and then turn it over and it clarifies everything. So I'm going to do that as I go through some of these. And just want to show you a really cool one. This is the fun part. It's like just this, uh, like a treasure hunt. Now this has got a beautiful design, lovely design. This I believe is hand carved. I can see tool marks. All of these designs are all uh, hand carved. But I want to show you what happens with the face. Do you see these little, just a bunch of patterns, a repeat pattern of curls, and then the face. Now I mentioned face with the nose sticking further in. I want to show you what happens when you press into it. And you take that out. And there's the face. Isn't that sweet? And then you got the curls around her hair, around her head. And anyway, so... This is, that's the fun part. It's just sort of, you it may not look like anything for a while and then you test it and then it just shows up, <laughs> just jumps out, jumps out at you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, so what I've got, I've got these divisions and I'm gonna take my V chisel and I'm gonna divide or basically make a frame so that when I do press the cookie, um, press the dough onto it, I'll already have a frame where I know uh, where to cut it. All right, so just going to take a V chisel and I'm going to use a mallet just because it's sometimes a little easier to guide the tool. And now I'm using these long handle gouges. The set that I have here is a, a dictum set of gouges. And I like using the long handle ones because when you're actually pushing through like that, I hold on to them with both hands, much safer, much more secure than say those lo little gouge gouges with you know the short stubby ones um, where there's a tendency to maybe hold on to the carving and go like that. So hand on the other side of the blade, not a good idea. So with this way, everything is on this side of the blade, much, much safer and actually really secure for holding and controlling the tool. Okay, so I'm just going to do one of these, show you. All right, just for a nice border. So you can do that around all of these and that is just going to create this frame so I know where the edge of the cookie is. What I'm going to do, now I'm going to show you the technique of, of carving this Christmas tree. And so the trick with this is you don't necessarily want to have it so deep that it's actually going to affect the baking of the cookie. So if you end up having this area that's maybe a quarter of an inch and then this area that's a half an inch, it's going to end up actually affecting the the uh, baking time for the center. This is going to be too done and then so anyway, it's, there's there's just some issues that will happen when there's too many different variations. So this type of carving where it's just simply a pattern across the surface 
uh, you don't want to necessarily go too deep. So, but you do want just enough to show enough of that illusion of what you're trying to show. So what I'm doing with this one is I'm going to do a little bit of a, of a scoop out so that it gives the impression that, or when I make the, the cookie pressed, it's actually going to look like it's coming out a little bit in the sort of belly of the tree. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right here. Just going to take, and the one I'm using here is a number 810, and I'll probably use a larger one. Yeah, that's actually creating too many gouge marks. So I'm going to go ahead. This is now a 613. You see that's just not creating as many gouge marks and a little bit more of a gentle of a curve out. So when you when you think about this in reverse, this is actually going to be the deepest area because that's the part that you want to stick out the furthest. So I'm just doing a kind of a general hollowing of this. All right, at the center. And now I'm going to take my V chisel and I'm going to start to come in from the side and create some, just a variation of kind of that outer edge of the, the curves of the tree. Okay, so just make sure they got a nice curve to it and then just kind of fill in some of this because it's some blank areas. All right, so let's just do one more there. Now I want to show you also how to do the little star on top. And all that is just going to be is like that. Right, I'm using this V-chisel again, and this V-chisel is exactly what it sounds like. It's shaped like a V, two flat sides coming down to the corner. And so a lot of this is going to be used, a lot of the, the details in it is, is going to be carved using a V-chisel. And so now what I want to do is take this one and just carve the little stand just so that it looks like it's kind of its own little own little shape there. And then one other little thing to make it look like there's a a stem, all right, not the stem, the trunk. Let's just go like that. Okay, now, now this is this is uh, the big test. I'm gonna take this in here and really press it down. And yay! <laughs> you can see that is really gonna be a nice cookie surface. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead. Now what I did on all of this is I just sketched on some ideas. Now this is sort of like a snowflake, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead. I just sketched this on lightly. You can get a little bit more exact, but I'm just gonna do the same thing. And the snowflake is, I, I'm gonna start out with just outlining it and then I'm just gonna continue to add little details because the whole thing about a snowflake is you want it symmetrical and you also want it six sides. Now I actually carved a snowflake one time for a lesson uh, that had eight sides. And I was corrected. <laughs> I, who, who would have known? <laughs> anyway, six sides. I've got it correct now. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, whatever you do uh, is going to be symmetrical. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing right here and just And the thing is, you can pretty much make up any design. And another thing, another idea is just Google either Christmas images or Springerly cookie or something like that. And you can, um, you can come up with a lot of ideas that way. 
Gotta love Google. All right, this, uh, I just use an old toothbrush to kind of brush off little details and it kind of helps um, finish off the edges too. Make sure you don't use that free toothbrush after that. Okay, now I'm just gonna go on the tip here and and just make the same pattern coming through here. All right, and again, I'm only only using the V chisel up to this point. <coughs> okay, so that's that, and then I can do something down the center like so. All right, and then let's do one more coming out from there to there, just a little ways into it. Okay, and you can keep going, but sometimes um, sometimes it's actually nice to do a very busy thing because then if you make a mistake, then um, it doesn't show up. <laughs> okay, let's just see how this is looking. Okay, there. So you see that? Just a simple pattern like that really shows up nicely. Okay, let's move on to some a little bit more decorative, a little bit more complicated designs. Uh, again, I, I can do the same thing, make that border around there. But with this now, when you're talking about this little bird, this, in order to make it look like the wing is the furthest out, that actually has to be the furthest down. So we're getting a little bit more complicated here. But let's just see here. So for this one, this I'm using that number 613. And I just want to be careful not to get too deep, but just enough to show that, show the shape. Okay, so we got a little bit of a kind of a bowl shape there. And then we got a smaller one for the head. This is the number 810. Okay, and then what I'm going to do also right here, so I'm going to redraw on the wing so I know where that's going. And then we're going to do some details there. And I'm going to go ahead and take that wing down a little bit further so that, the, again, everything that is the furthest back is going to look like when it's when you actually make the pressed mold, that's actually going to look like it is the furthest, or sorry, the closest. Yeah, see, now I'm getting confused. Okay, so there's that, and now I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more of actually taking that wing and making a little bit of an edge so that the entire wing looks like it is it is coming out a little bit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and this branch. Now, this is where I need to test it because this kind of messes with me. I'm going to go ahead and just see how this is looking. And it's a really good idea to do this. Okay, so you can kind of see, all right, what's happening with that. I still have the Christmas tree impression. It's not showing up great. Let me just go ahead and take it a little bit deeper because it's not showing up very well. So make a, the edges a little bit more dramatic. So the hard edges, like the ones on the tree, that sometimes it shows up a little bit easier, a little bit better. And you also have to be careful not to get too deep <laughs> by, by keep going and going and going. Okay, and let's just see what's happening. I have to have to redo the mold. All right, so yeah, okay, so that's kind of, I still don't have a beak or a face on it, but there you go, that's showing up. And yeah, I'm liking the look of that. So I'm going to continue on, 
And <clears throat> when you think about this now, I'm going to have a I'm going to have a branch coming down underneath it, but it should look like it's going <laughs> this way. You have to really figure this out. It you want it to look like it's behind the bird, right? So, if it's further back, then you actually want it to have it a little higher, right? <laughs> In the mold, you want to have it higher, not quite as deep. I think that's correct. <clears throat> so let's just see. So that actually should kind of go right up to there, and not. Hmm. Anyway, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring it like that. <laughs> then I'm gonna take my V chisel, and I'm gonna make this little branch here. And I'm going to make another little branch there. F and then, oops, I forgot to do the beak. All right, then I'm going to do the beak there. And then also this little olive branch. Because this is the dove. Okay, it's holding an olive branch. And then go ahead oops I still have a few more things to do on the tail make the tail feathers and maybe make a little bit deeper um, wing feathers all right and now what oh yes now I'm gonna take this one the number 810 and I'm gonna make some little leaves so just like little football shapes and it doesn't necessarily have to touch that uh, has touch the stem in fact sometimes it looks nice when it's just just a step off oops all it is is just cut like that cut like that again th this type of pattern here is like that pattern that was on the the details like this one all the details all it is each one of these details is one tool making that cut and then it's reversed so it kind of gives an s shape and so yeah some real fun things you can do with it and so just play around with it now this is another one a little bit larger leaves here okay like that and same thing there And there, and then one other one at the tip. Okay, so I'm kind of rushing through this, but you can, you know, spend a little bit more time making sure that they're nice and clean. And same thing here. Again, I'm really not, not necessarily having to touch the stem with it. Now you can see my um, cuts are slightly off from my pencil lines, but that's all right. Usually, what happens is my pencil lines understand or my <laughs> or my tool usually under understands the design a little bit more than my pencil okay so now I want to make a nice clean surface there and okay oh fun look at that Oh, isn't that exciting? So this is the first time I actually did this design so um, it's really really exciting to see and there's, you can see when the light catches it, um, you can really see the shadow and the design of the bird. Oh, fun. Okay, now, one more thing. I'm going to do this. Uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, the bell. Now, this is, um, <laughs> you want it to look like it's arcing towards you so that this ends up being the deepest part. And actually, this is the deepest part because you want it to make it look like it's curling towards you. So I'm going to go ahead and start with just this large one. This is number 520. Again, be careful not to get too deep. Okay, and then have it just end along the edge. All 
right now along this side I'm going to take my V chisel and I'm going to come in here and define that edge there and then let it fade up so I think I might have gotten a little deep there should be deeper there and shallower there and then I'm going to take this again this large number 520 and give the illusion that you want it deeper there this is where you kind of have to have to figure this out and I'm going to have to check this because all right I'm going to do this a little bit more aggressively a little deeper there and then take this All right, now I'm just not going to do much more than that. And then uh, there's also going to be a kind of a repeat of this curve to give that, ooh, that's not a very good line. And then maybe two V cuts right there. Let's just go from here to there. And all that is is just a just a small V cut. If, as long as it goes along that edge, that same curve repeat, it appears then that this is going to be rounded. Now I'm going to try this right now and just get an idea whether I am on the right path. Okay, so yeah, I think it probably could be a little bit deeper, but I think we're on the right path. Yeah, so let's go ahead and just go along in the outer edges Okay, yeah, just just to so that the edges are defined a little bit a little bit more solidly. Okay, and then just take that surface down again. Now, if you get caught uh, with the grain direction doing something very mysterious, <laughs> which happens with wood carving, the best thing to do, like right there, best thing to do is actually come across the grain. Okay, so the grain is very difficult to see on basswood, but the grain has been going this way. So sometimes just going like this across the grain gets you in control of the grain. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take this and make the bow and you can have this kind of varied in, in thickness just to give it kind of that twisting bow appearance okay and then this coming down like that and just doing a little bit of a twist like that and same thing here And then there's going to be a little, here I've got a little, this is a number 10, 5. Okay, and the same thing right here, I'm going to use a more curved one here, just to create this little bell ringer. And then just a little there <laughs> so eh, it's a little quick but uh, we'll see how this is gonna work all right yeah there it is oops I still have to I carved away those um, but yeah I think that's gonna work let me just finish that I actually when I deepened it I carved those lines away I have to make those come back again and I think that's it. Okay, anyway, it's, I, I'm losing the, uh, <laughs> the detail on this because <laughs> it's getting dirty. <laughs> so anyway, that is really, really, <laughs> that was, was very quick. And, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, you don't need a lot of crazy tools, amount of tools uh, that set that I use the set from dictum is perfect uh, you can use the large ones to get the the bulk of it away use some of the smaller curves to get some of the details and 
Yeah, and and this is really fun for Christmas. Get your family together. You can make the the molds and then go and bake something, and it's a lot of fun. So I do. I would suggest doing some research on the actual recipes. There's a lot of different recipes, but if you want to go real traditional German Springerly cookie molds and and cookies, uh, there's a lot out there you can study. Uh, as I said, I am not a baker. I'm a carver. This is what makes sense to me. <laughs> but as you can see, it's a lot of fun. And when you discover it for the first time and you realize that as you, as you make that press and then you release it and it's in reverse and it's just so exciting. <laughs> so, so happy carving, everybody. And Merry Christmas from South Carolina.